In this video, I want to talk about a real-world application of these absolute value inequalities. You may think this is just dumb, stupid, whoever uses this. Well, suppose that you are in manufacturing, right, and you're trying to make metal rods so that they're 30 inches long. Now, ideally, they would all be exactly 30 inches, but we know that's very hard to do. So you might have certain tolerances where they could be off by just a little bit and still be good enough, as they say, good enough for government work, right? And so what if we say that tolerance is one hundredth of an inch, okay? So that means the 30 inch rod could be up to one hundredth of an inch longer or shorter than 30 inches. What does that look like as an absolute value? Well, that means the absolute value, this is your distance between what you measure and manufacture and 30, okay? So this is finding the difference between those values. So this is what it's supposed to be, and this is what you're manufacturing. You want this to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. That's what the situation is that I'm talking about. So what will be those acceptable lengths? Well, you turn this into an inequality and you solve it. So I'm creating a boundary here because I want my distance to be less than 0 0.01. That means I want x minus 30 to be less than or equal to 0 0.01 or to the right of negative 0 0.01. And so if I look at this inequality and I solve it by adding 30 to all pieces, let's see what we get. So when I add 30 to everything, this gives me 29.99 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 30.01. So here's what we're saying. We're saying for these metal rods to be good enough for whatever their particular purpose is, they have to measure between 29.99 and 30.01 inches, right? So as long as it's within that range, then we're going to be fine, right? And we kind of deal with this stuff all the time if you just kind of, you know, pay attention. Um, so anyway, I thought that was kind of a neat example. But let's look at some weird things that can happen with these absolute values. If I look at this, the absolute value of x is less than or equal to negative 5. So those rules that I gave you for converting the absolute value inequalities into stuff that didn't have the absolute values, it was all predicated on this number being non-negative. Because think about this, when will the absolute value give you something that's less than negative 5? When you think about it, the absolute value is going to give you something that's either 0 or positive. Is 0 less than negative 5? No. Is a positive number less than negative 5? No. So what this means is that there would actually be no, there's no solution. And you might say, oh, that's preposterous. I'll show you wrong. Yeah, why don't you do that? Well, if we go back to what it says when we have the less than or equal to, that means that you would split this up to say x is less than or equal to negative 5 and, which means intersection, x is greater than or equal to the opposite of this, which is positive 5. So if you were to graph this, here's negative 5, and here's positive 5. You'd have to be less than or equal to negative 5, and greater than or equal to 5. But you see here, there's no intersection. And that's what the word and means. It means look for the intersection, look for what they have in common. These guys have nothing in common. So that's why there's no solution. Now, I'm pretty sure you're going to see at least one question in the homework that looks like that. But compare it to this one. If I take the absolute value of x is greater than negative 23, what's that going to look like? Well, think about the absolute value. It's either going to give you something 0 or positive. If this is 0, is 0 greater than negative 23? Yeah. 
any other number you plug in here is going to give you something positive, right? And a positive value is always greater than negative 23. It doesn't matter what you plug in, it's always going to be true. And so we can say that the solution set would be all real numbers. Again, if you don't believe me, and why should you? Let's think about what this means if we were to split this up. This means that x is greater than negative 23. Since it's greater, you would use the word or for union. x is, flip that guy, change that sign. And let's see what this looks like if we were to graph this. All right, I've got negative 23, positive 23. Or, again, means union, so you put everything together. So greater than negative 23 is this. Less than 23 is that. So union says put it all together, so I would ask, what did we color on that number line? We colored everything. So that means any real number is going to be a solution to that inequality.